with the deadlift, is there any prerequisite you feel people need to meet before they get into deadlifts? Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, one of the, the biggest components of the deadlift is the hip hinge. Um, mainly because it just teaches you what that position feels like. So I'm going to show you guys a quick drill that you guys can use with either a dumbbell or a kettlebell to help you feel what it is like to hip hinge so that when you're deadlifting you can recreate that feeling and perform the movement. So the movement I'm going to show you guys is called uh, handcuff hip hinge and I'm going to have Mark demonstrate it. You can either use a kettlebell which you have here or a dumbbell and what I'm going to get Mark to do is hold the bell and hold it behind his butt like he's being handcuffed. And I hope this is not bringing back any traumatic memories for you. You bring your feet together right underneath your hips, glue them to the floor, and then from there all Mark's going to do is just soften his knees a little bit and just push the bell back with his butt. So as soon as Mark's hips stop moving back, that's where I'd want him to stop moving down. So a good, another good way to think about it is if, if his hip is hit, is if his butt stops moving back, his chest does not continue to move down. Because you want to think about here, the hips to the shoulders is one piece that doesn't bend or flex or extend or anything and the only motion is coming from the hips going back. So as soon as the hips are not moving back, any, we know any motion is gonna come somewhere from here, and in terms of creating you know, good stability or good tension, we wanna minimize as much motion through the torso as possible. The deadlift is a full body movement, not just a one body part movement, and I mean, I came from the bodybuilding background where it's like, yeah, I backed it, you do deadlifts, and that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it makes perfect sense why you would feel only your back and maybe not your legs at all. When in reality, like you want, you know, pretty much your whole body to be involved in your deadlift. So this isn't necessarily about isolating one body part, but a deadlift is a great way to help you, you know, teach you, teach you how to integrate your body, you know, connect all the dots, so to speak, so that you can move a lot of weight safely and effectively. Getting into the deadlift itself, where should they be feeling it? What should they be feeling? So my big things that I, I tell people to, you know, get, a hang, get the hang of, you know, usually with lighter weights when you're practicing the movement, not when we're too heavy, um, is uh, feeling the hamstrings. Tighten up the lats, and then you know, learning how to brace your midsection or your core, you know, 360 degrees, so the whole way around. Mm -hmm. Those are really the only three that I kind of have people focus on, at least initially, mm -hmm. um, because they tend to, you know, act as the big rocks or the big components of the movement. And when you mentioned the, you know, tightening your 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 midsection, um, I know there's, uh, you know, a, a number of cues out there. Um, some people say, you know fill the boat with water or if you have belt make sure that you're you're putting pressure mm -hmm. against the belt the thing that always worked for me was if you're if you're going into a you know an exercise and you need to brace your core just kind of kind of pretend someone's just about to just punch you in the gut no please don't you know what i mean yeah no don't okay Seriously. basic deadlift setup i mean we're going to be doing a conventional stance so i feet underneath your hips i'll just have mark set up that way I'm gonna get him to set up the bar one inch away from his shins. So you wanna keep the bar as close to you as possible. It's a big component of the deadlifting. The moment the bar starts drifting away from you, it automatically is gonna weigh more and force your body to work harder. So if you wanna lift a lot of heavy weight and not like little dinky weights, make sure that that bar is one inch away from your shins when you start. From there, I'm just gonna have Mark push his hips back like he was doing with the handcuff hip hinge. Okay, now I'm gonna have him reach his arms down. Imagine they're like nice long ropes and grab onto the bar. Now, I'm gonna have him pull the bar against his legs and imagine that he has a pair of oranges in his armpits and he's trying to squeeze them and make orange juice. Okay, from there, I want you to take a nice deep breath in and then leg press the floor or push the floor away from you to stand up. Okay, to go back down, butt goes back to the wall behind you. And the bar goes to the floor. All right, so now I'm gonna have Mark walk right up to the bar so he's about an inch away with his shins. He's going to send his hips back, looking for that stretch in his hamstrings like he felt when he was doing his handcuff image. His arms are nice and long ropes. He's going to pull his armpits tight. Imagine he's squishing orange, oranges in there, making orange juice. From here, he's, you're, you're tight, yeah? Yep. Take a nice deep breath in, and then leg press the floor. I see a lot of people taking the slack out of the bar before they're, they're getting set up. Their friends are slapping them, you know? <laughs> Is that, is that getting spit, the slack out? Their or is friends that are slapping? spitting in their face. They walk up to the bar and they create all this tension and then they're... And then they lose all that tension. At the end of the day, you can only really worry about, you know, your own progress as a lifter and, you know, if someone's really, really strong, then what they're doing is probably working for them for, you know, a number of reasons. Um, but with a beginner lifter or someone who's just starting out, um, if you're not familiar with the movement, you want to make sure that you're as tight as possible 
in that start position and you're not letting go of that tension. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen people make is they'll get down in that bottom position, they'll get really tight, and then right before they lift, they'll almost let go of something, whether it's their arms loosening, it's their butt dropping, their butt raising up too high, and then it, what ends up happening is either this, where their butt just shoots up first, or this, as soon as they start to lift. And they've, they've then turned the deadlift from being a you know full body movement where everything's working together to like a multi body part movement where some things are working really hard and other things are not. At any point when you, when you lose tension in a certain area, then you're gonna feel a disconnect. It really mm -hmm. is, it yeah. really is just getting hold and you're, you're literally a machine. You're, you're grabbing hold of that bar and then in one, in one swift movement, it's boom. Yeah. And, it, and the bar's up, right? Literally, if you're in the right spot and the mark's totally correct, you wanna have, your whole body should feel tight. Um, and then from there, all you have to really do is stand up. I've heard a number of people say this, but I, I remember, um, one one cue that really stuck with me was pushing the ground yeah. away from me. Yeah, so that that's the kind of thing I touched on earlier. It is a pull, but more pulling the slack out with the back, and it is a push with the legs. So when you're in that bottom position and you're coiled tight like a spring, from here, all you're trying to do is just like crush the ground with your feet, push the floor away from you, and stand up tall. And that'll make sure that the body's working together as one unit, and there's no like leaks in the boat, like Mark said. Cool. Ladies benefit. Is this? Is this? Can this be a Paul Hines body a booty builder? This is a booty builder in general. Because I'm not. I'm for the